time to begin. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. We're just finishing our series on the atonement. And uh, I can testify personally that in doing the preparation and the teaching on the subject of God's satisfaction or the atonement, it was certainly a blessing to my own heart and life and the realization of all that the atonement encompassed. Uh, I think we tend, I'll speak for myself, I think we tend to sort of say, oh yeah, Christ died on the cross. That was wonderful and glorious. And, but not having in our mind and heart all that was accomplished uh, when he died on the cross. Now, having gone through the series on the atonement, I want to add this Sunday school lesson today on the, basically on the topic of the approachableness of Christ. The approachableness of Christ. Um, there are some people that are easy to approach. They're friendly, they're warm, they're engaging. There's some people who are not easy to approach, who are reserved and different. Um, several years ago I was having some back problems and my primary care physician recommended a doctor in Dallas. And so I had my appointment and went. It was quite interesting, and it was a very memorable occasion, simply because this doctor had a nurse to take the notes. I, had, I was sitting in a chair. He gets a chair and pulls it up very close. He looks me right in the eye, directly, and he says, now tell me what's going on in your life. And he never took his eyes off of me. He was intense in me sitting there and telling him my problem. You talk about somebody that was approachable. <laughs> it was almost like he was receiving me in, uh, to his confidence, interested in me. Well, as a result, he made a good diagnosis. He said, you'll get over it in a few months. There's no need to do anything. He said, by the way, what do you do? And I told him, I saw him reform, a uh, pastor of Reformed Baptist Church. He says, hmm, Reformed Baptist. He says, well, I'm Presbyterian. He says, we're cousins. So uh, we had a good relationship, and but I'll never forget how engaging this doctor was. I use that simply as an illustration as to even our own personal relationships with others, particularly as believers, Christians who are and should be on the alert to engage people to receive them to be approachable if we're looking for open doors to witness to them about the Lord. And um, our Lord was approachable. Now, Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Now, <clears throat> think of this crowd. Now, all of the tax gatherers and the sinners, how did they get that title? The sinners were coming near him to listen to him. And both the Pharisee and the scribes began to grumble, complain, saying, 
This man receives sinners and eats with them. Boy, may the Lord strike our hearts. This man receives sinners. In the words of our text, we see that some of the most depraved and despised people of our Lord's day were not hesitant to draw near to Christ. <clears throat> Apparently, they sensed that Christ was approachable. For the most part, the monarchs, the people of authority, the leaders of that day were in seclusion, unapproachable. They surrounded themselves with all sorts of barriers. Remember the story of Esther who uh, though the monarch was her husband, yet went with her life in her hand when she ventured to present herself before King Azarias. In great contrast, our Lord Jesus Christ was King of Kings. He placed no barriers. Instead, he gave a gracious invitation indiscriminately to all. Turn with me to John six thirty seven. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. Of course, that phrase holds a significant meaning for us, doesn't it? His own people from eternity past, they'll come. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Jesus is to be approached by some favored few but by all in whose heart his Holy Spirit has enkindled that desire to enter into his presence. I like when we speak of witnessing to others. What an opportunity, what a ministry we have to point them to Christ. My recent experience was dealing with a young man that I met recently, as our people here know about. Um, it was a business question transaction. I discovered when I got home that I went back to the shop to uh, deal with it. And um, it's amazing that as I went back and realized I'm going to have to make that trip back down there and has to talk to this guy and everything. It just seemed like the Lord said, take him the little book of an ultimate question. So I got a copy of the book and they went down there. And as I approached this young man, what a opportunity it is to begin to build a conversation and relationship. And that developed into our having a weekly Bible study. And I gave him the book Knowing God by J.I. Packer. And every time I go by the shop to see him, to check on him, he would say, I'm up to page 29 now. And he showed it to me, he's underlining it. Uh, in different places. He said, that's the, that's the most interesting book I've ever read. But what a thrill it is to just 
be able to build that relationship and see it blossom. <clears throat> and my heart's desire is I want to point this young man to Christ. Show him the Redeemer. God given opportunities. God ordained opportunities. How do we see that Christ, how does it appear that Christ is approachable? First of all, I want to say, because of the various offices that Christ exercises in his life. The first one I would like to name for you is that he's the mediator. The mediator. You don't need to turn there, just listen. 1 Timothy 2.5, for there is one God and one mediator also between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Now, the fact that he is the mediator would mean that he's approachable. Not distant. Because for a mediator to serve as a mediator, he would have to be approachable. And he is. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. As a mediator, he must be able to come to God on behalf of men. But he must also be able to have and to sustain a very close relationship with man. And what a mediator God has provided in his son, Jesus Christ. You do not need a mediator between your soul and God if, if that's the way you think. Then you must not think of coming to God as God. If we don't see that need of one who makes intercession for us on the behalf of us. There is a preparation of going to God and to His presence. I think Henry's written a, a work on prayer and what true prayer means. And one of the things that he begins with and insists on is that even we ourselves ought to take very seriously our coming in to the presence of God in our own personal devotions. We shouldn't be careless or flippant or distracted uh, by whatever. We're coming to God to spend time with Him. But how good it is to know that we have a mediator Amen. between us and in Christ. Then, another office that our Lord occupies that makes him approachable is that of being a priest. In the Old Testament times, there were those who served as priests, but they were four different. A 
Our Lord is a high priest. Think of this as I read from the book of Hebrews. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in the time of need. What a, a blessing it is to be able to come into the very presence of God through Christ, our mediator, our priest. In times of sorrow, times of deep concern, tribulation, trials, perhaps times when you're so constrained, so burdened, that all you can do is weep, cry, tears. <coughs> the Lord understands. He hears those groans and tears. He knows. He's approachable. Even in our deepest times of anguish, sorrow, heartache, He's there. He's approachable. And He, he hears our prayers. But then there's another office that our Lord occupies that speaks of him being approachable. And that is his being a savior. A savior. Um, you remember the incident of the priest and the Levite? Uh, the Levite and the priest passed by this man who had been robbed and beaten and they went on the other side totally unapproachable unavailable to help to minister but there was one who undertook to help one who stooped to help, took the wine and the oil and poured it in the open wounds, took him to a place of safety. Now, what a wonderful thing it is as we deal with people in need that we can point them to Christ and know that our Lord is approachable, whatever their need. And you know that I'm quite involved with the prison ministry to the men in California. And how wonderful it is to see these men brought into a personal saving relationship with Christ. When basically with many of these men, Nobody cares about them. But Christ does. And Christ has redeemed many of them from their sin. And that's because Christ takes them in. He is approachable and available. Think of some of the titles used for our Lord. Very interestingly, one is the Lamb. The Lamb of God. <clears throat> Lambs are meek and mild animals. 
I doubt there's anybody afraid of Lynn because they can't even be cuddly in a sense. But our Savior is known as the Lamb of God. But then I want us to think about this. The Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. And the care that a shepherd gives. In fact, our Lord says, I am the good shepherd. And I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock with one shepherd. That just puts the word approachable in right lights. Arms wide open. The reception that he gives us. As we consider even the person of Christ, I want us to go back and think of our Lord's incarnation and virgin birth. What does that have to do with it? Turn with me to Philippians 2 and verse 5. <clears throat> Philippians 2 and verse 5. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, Notice carefully these words, but emptied himself. What an interesting phrase. Then we read, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in, in the likeness of men. Bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ, of course, is God. But if he were God only, you might well stand at a distance and shudder and the splendor and the majesty. But he was a man as well as God. Someone has written these words. Till God is human flesh, I see. My thoughts no comfort find. The only just and sacred three are terrors to my mind. But if Emmanuel's face appear, my hope, my joy begins. His name forbids my slavish fear. His grace removes my sin. He knew what it was to be forsaken, to be despised. He knew what it was to hunger. He knew what it was not to have a place to lay his head. He can sympathize with your weakness, with your concerns. Now, I want us to move to another aspect, and it's his words and his actions. By his words, he announces, he makes known his being able to be approached, 
come unto me. That's an open invitation. Come unto me. Who? All ye that labor and are heavy laden. But it doesn't stop there. Now I'll give you rest. Now I'll give you rest. You know, again, I refer back to these men that we work with in prison. And I've seen these men, in fact, as you know, uh, I'm still working with a man back in North Carolina that we knew through our jail ministry. The man is serving two life sentences plus 99 years. I've known him for 30 some odd years and ministered to him. Matthew Henry is his fa favorite commentary. Amen. He just absorbs it. Years ago, I bought him a set of commentaries and got them in to him in the prison. And um, I don't know how many times he's read them, but now they have modified tablets, and the commentary is on the tablet. And he is such a fan of Matthew Henry and gets so much out of it that he reads a section and then he copies that section word for word, sends it to me every morning, and then he expects me to get back with an added commentary and flesh it out some. And this man knows and loves the Lord, growing in grace. Anybody else would reject this guy, you know. But we had the opportunity early on, as we began to deal with him, of pointing him to Christ. And he's growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord. And come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Well, so many gracious invitations that speak to us that he is approachable. Ho, uh, for instance, Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have no money. Come buy, he, come buy wine, milk without money. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? Incline your ear unto me. Listen that you may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Those words are in bright light saying I'm approachable. Come, come unto me. Well, it's interesting that our Lord responded and he was criticized. He eats with sinners. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful that he does? And that sinners were welcomed with him. Now, uh, finally, this approachableness of Christ is seen in his life of serving others and yet being crucified and convicted as a felon. <clears throat> uh, 
Having seen the approachableness of Christ, once more I want to point you to this approachableness as seen in the help which he affords. Nine. Even to us today. And I want us to become aware of his approachableness every day as we have our time with him. But I want us to be very, very conscious as God providentially and sovereignly brings you into contact with those who are needing to come to Christ and to know that Christ is approachable. Keep that in your mind and heart as you have opportunity to pour needy souls to a Savior who is approachable with you and with them. As God leads and gives you those opportunities day by day, and he will. What a blessing it is to be alert to those times and to be involved in seeing others come to Christ. Well, let's pray and ask God to uh, help us as we seek to lead others to our Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you this morning and that you drew us to yourself. We were able to flee to Christ, who became our Lord and our Savior. And we go to him day by day. Lord, we realize that we come in contact with needy souls, never dying souls, who are yet outside of Christ. Help us, Lord, to be aware of these opportunities that are God-given, sovereignly and providentially given, that we can be the ones to show them the way for the good of their souls. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.